Today we're going to be looking at working with a MySQL server um, from the command line. I have limited knowledge on this, but I'm going to show you the basis, the basics that I know. Uh, I have a Debian server set up here. It's a very minimal command line install of Debian uh, in a virtual box. I'm going to log in as root here. So let me click on the virtual box. Root. And my password is root, isn't normally, but um, there we go, we're logged in. And real quick, we're gonna use aptitude and we're gonna say update to make sure that we have the latest packages uh, available or list of packages available. And um, I am running an older version of Debian, but it doesn't make a difference for this tutorial. Uh, once I get the uh, list of packages, it's gonna tell me that I have to do some updates. Normally I would recommend doing aptitude uh, upgrade, uh, but just for time's sake with tutorial, we're just going to install what we need for MySQL server. So we've downloaded the new list of packages. If I do aptitude, I can search for MySQL. When we hit enter, you'll see that there's a whole bunch of packages. We can look through them by holding down shift and hitting up page. So you can see there's a bunch. But what we care about is right there, it's called MySQL server. So aptitude install my sql dash server and we'll hit enter and you'll see that there's a list of other packages it wants to install that's fine one of them is the uh, mysql client which is something we're going to use so that's a great thing so we'll just hit yes and continue through that now that it's downloading those packages um, We'll just wait till it's done, but uh, once they're downloaded and it goes to install them, it is going to pop up a little dialog window, and it's going to ask us for a root password. That is not the root password for the server, for the system here. It's the root password for the MySQL, so you're actually creating a password. Um, and you can have a different root password for the system and the MySQL server. So if you have a system administrator and someone else is the MySQL uh, administrator, you can have different passwords and that's great. So here we go, it's asking for a root password. I'm gonna make uh, Linux my password, all lowercase. Uh, obviously you'd wanna use something more secure than that. So you typed it once and then it asks you to uh, type it again just to confirm, uh, make sure you typed it right. Hit enter and now it's, it's unpackaging and setting stuff up and uh, it will automatically uh, start up the MySQL server uh, during this setup so you don't have to worry about starting it up although we'll go over that in a future tutorial how to restart it uh, and now we're just gonna wait so you can see right there it's stopping any MySQL uh, databases and server and now it started them up and there we go okay going first thing we need to do is we need to create a database on the MySQL server. So here we go. We're going to say MySQL uh, admin. And then we're going to say dash um, H for local host or dash H for host. We're logging into our local host. Uh, obviously, if you're logging in from a remote machine, you'd put in the IP address of that machine. Um, dash u and that's for user we're gonna log in as the mysql root user dash p and then our password and there's no space between the dash p and the password that's a little weird and that confused me at first when I first was learning how to do this dash p and your password my password is Linux so no space there and we're going to create a database and we'll just call it films by Chris no errors so it seemed to have worked we'll say my uh, SQL and uh, so now we don't need to use MySQL admin anymore at this point. We're just going to use MySQL interface dash H. Once again, local host in this case. I keep missing that L. Um, I'll log in as the root again and dash P and our password with no space. So now we're in the MySQL interface. And first thing we need to do is create uh, or I'm sorry, move into the database we just created, which we called Films by Chris. So we're going to say use Films by Chris semicolon. And it says database change. So now we're inside the My uh, Films by Chris uh, database. And now we're going to create a table. We're going to say create table. Simple enough. 
And we're going to call this table, um, we'll just call it users, I guess. And then inside these parentheses, we need to give it uh, basically uh, fields. So these are, if you're familiar with databases, you got your database, you got your tables, and then fields. Think of it as a, kind of like a Excel database, these uh, columns of stuff. So our first column, we'll call it F name for first name. We have to tell it that we want it to be a, a character type of um, input. So you have uh, characters and integers and a few other options, but since we're going to, it's a name, it's going to be regular alphabetical characters. So C-H-A-R for character, and then inside uh, parentheses, uh, we're going to put 20, and that's the number of characters. That, that the first name can be up to 20 characters. Obviously, if you think someone's name is going to be longer than that, you would want to make that longer. We're going to do comma, and then we'll do L name for last name. Once again, that will be a character input. We'll make that one 20 as well. Usually last names aren't any longer than 20. Uh, then comma, and we'll say, um, uh, you, uh, we'll say username. So this field will be their username or their screen name. And once again, we'll just make that one a character of 20 characters. And don't forget to end this with a semicolon on the outside of the outer parentheses there. And it says, okay, so everything's good there. Um, at this point, we can type show tables, semicolon, and hit enter. Oh, not show tables, show tables. And there you go, you can see we have a table called users. Uh, now, if you were to type out any of these commands and forget to put that semicolon, it brings you down the new line. No problem, just put a semicolon there and hit enter, and it knows that you're done typing out that command. Um, so we've installed the server, we've created a database, we create a table inside this database, and we've seen how to look at uh, what tables we have available inside this database. Uh, I'm going to stop this tutorial here, and next time we will start uh, with um, uh, actually inputting values into those fields inside the table and how to retrieve them. So thank you for watching. Please visit the links in the description, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. Also, um, I just hope that you have a great day and get ready for the next tutorial.